This shadowy soldier with his two pistols is back, Dan Reichert. He's brooding. And so are we. No, no. No, I know. We're back. We're not we're, well, we're back. We're not yeah. brooding. No, 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 we're, not, we're not brooding. No, we're not brooding. No. Yeah. Uh, this is Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Got or screen. just Black Ops 3, as it says here on the title screen. Almost like Modern Warfare 2 or something. That was, yeah. People were saying it's going to be a totally different series back then. And then it's like, oh, no, just kidding. It's Call of Duty. No, Still, yeah, no. Totally Call of Duty. That, that, I mean, that seems like that was one of the things that you could look at as the tension between <laughs> Infinity Ward and Activision. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. It's, this is a big game. It, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff in here. Okay. Um, I like stuff. Uh, so we're going to take a look at some of the stuff, starting with... Camp I mean, this menu's in an order for a reason. We're going to look at campaign. <laughs> There's my campaign lady. She smokes cigars. Cool. Uh, it's a created character in the campaign this time um, that they don't even give a name to, really. It just Even the subtitles just say player. Okay. So it's got a whole like character creation thing and everything? It does. So, it does, okay. yeah. Uh, and uh, you cannot choose whether or not she smokes cigars. I think cigars are disgusting. Yeah. I, would, I would not have my character smoke a cigar, and I, I'm, I'm pretty... I'm pretty against it. Have you ever smoked one? I've never smoked a cigar. No, I, I don't smoke. I don't want to smoke anything. Ever. Yeah, it seems no That's, good. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to. So I, I've played this just past the kind of tutorial parts, uh, which introduce you to the cyber core abilities and some of the other stuff. And, and we should be able to get in here. And I think. So this game's out in some territories. Like Australia started kind of rolling out uh, around the world already. So there's a possibility that someone might jump into this game because it's got online co op in the campaign now. Okay. Um, so and, and do you have privacy set to anyone can just do it's that? It's just open, man. Let's see what happens. All right. You know, let's get the real honest experience of uh, Call of Duty on its default settings. I had someone from Activision, or with a with a, uh, a PSN name that looked like uh, they worked at Activision, jump into my game and play a mission for me for a little while. So, so if anyone from Australia comes in, they're legit Call of Duty fans, but if anyone from America, they're filthy pirates and criminals, right? Well, you can't or they work for Activision, yeah, they work right? for, yeah, which means they're definitely filthy pirates and criminals. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's, you know, whatever, you can't pirate PS4 games. Okay, all right. They did some Easily. shenanigans to get the gamer. They know they know someone who knows someone who knows right. someone. Fell off a truck. The game's coming out it, it, tonight at nine anyway. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it's you know we're hours away from this game being out around the world. Cool. Uh, okay, so uh, in the tutorial, you start out as a regular soldier. And then, uh, have you seen RoboCop? I have seen. I own RoboCop. All right. You know what happens to him in RoboCop, and then he has to become a super, a super, super a robotic no, cop? Well, don't spoil the damn film for people, Jeff. Okay. Well, things happen <laughs> in this game, and you have to become a super soldier. Uh, so you've got computers strapped to your brain. You've got robot arms and limbs Sweet. and stuff. And, I'm on and, board. Uh, you've got cybernetic abilities. You got a skull um, with a beret on no, it. Got a skull with a beret on it. I found this. These are collectibles. You can pick which collectibles you display on your shelf. I chose this hat. The hat is what I found. The skull. No idea where the skull came from. <laughs> well, you've probably killed some men in this. Uh, in this I, I have definitely killed some men over the course of this game. Actually, as we as we happen upon things right now here in our safe house, um, this is five years after the events of the previous mission. Okay. So we've been out there, a black ops soldier doing stuff for a while. This is my lady. This is her gun. This is her terminal, uh, where we can, uh, you know, we can listen to some music if you want. Um, License stuff? Uh, no, it's the it's the stuff from the game. Doesn't have paint of black in it. Because they've no, been doing no, that in their commercials for a while no, now. I don't think so. We can listen to APC if you want. Oh, cool, Jack Wall or L <laughs> Laughing Corpse. The top fifty James McCauley track. Yeah. We also have the Codex, which is like a fake Wikipedia, like a fake web browser. Remember how the first game had that awesome terminal? Yeah. Uh, this has a, a web browser in it, and uh, you know you can kind of poke around and uh, you know look at the CIA pages and learn more about the weapons in the game. Uh, and some of the kind of fiction and, and the kind of extended lore type stuff is in here. This is actually one of the few spots where the game ties into the previous Black Ops games. This is thematically similar to the kind of mind fuck sort of stuff you think of when you think about the original Black Ops. Do they mention Mason or Woods or any of these so, dudes in it? Over the course of time, you unlock more bookmarks to visit. Uh, you know, here I've unlocked one for this collectible I found. That sort of stuff. But eventually you start, you get access to old emails from the timeline of Black Ops 1. And that stuff is nice, but like it's not oh, like the, okay. the, the in-game stuff um, that that ties it to Black Ops is really thin. 
Hmm. Uh, it's like it's like one character mentions the bad guy from Black Ops Two, and then another character is like a violently like, "Oh, that guy's a bad guy!" Like reaction to it. You're just like, <laughs> "What is it? You're like?" Well, he played the game, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, Hendrix. Where are who was the bad guy in two again? Uh, Raul. Uh, Raul Sanctuary. Menendez? Yeah, because there, there's a mission where you play as him, right? Yes. Like, yeah, isn't his yeah. family getting slow? Like, you've got a machete or yes, something? Yeah, like, it's like a crazy melee kill. Yeah, yeah I remember that, loving it's, that. It's like a ridiculous anime level oh, yeah. or something. Yeah. It's just really yeah, wild stuff. CIA, yeah. So, you know, you, 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 you work with this guy, Jacob Hendricks, who is a... Glad I don't... I think he sucks. Um, I also remember how I feel about the CIA watching over... And uh, we're about to embark on kind of the first uh, op that we'll be on post our surgery that gives us all these crazy abilities. I think you're just getting... You can kind of uh, you can uh, set your loadouts. So you, you just build a full loadout in this game. It's not like, hey, start the level with this. Uh, this is the loadout I built. Uh, the the traversal stuff in the game is actually one of these tack rigs. Um, so you don't do the boost jump and slot like all that stuff by default. You have to you have to equip this to get it. Okay. Uh, which I did because it's useful. Uh, as you 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 gain XP in the campaign, and as you level up, you gain fabrication kits, which are like unlock tokens in in multiplayer. You know, you just kind of can unlock additional. Uh, abilities and stuff like that. You also have your uh, that's your cyber core loadout, and uh, this is another place where you can spend those kits on various upgrades. I've picked the two that so I've already played through this campaign completely. Yeah, um, a couple weeks ago, um, and so I determined that the two things that work really well are upgraded adaptive immolation and upgraded firefly swarm. Actually, it's really just this one. Um, is is it, any of this overwhelming when it's presented to you, or do they kind of drip feed it? Like the the tutorial is a the whole second level of the game is, is a tutorial about these abilities. Okay, and it's it's done reasonably well. Okay, um, and and it's long. <laughs> uh, so ad adaptive immolation up, when upgraded. So it, by 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 default, I can use it to set a robot on fire. Okay. Uh, if I upgrade it to level two, it makes grenades go off in enemies' pockets. These are both cool things. Yeah, though the other one that I've got a lot of use out of, and while we're oh god, while we're here, um, this uh, this uh, uh, firefly swarm is a bunch of nano things, and if you upgrade them, they start they set enemies on fire. So you can set dudes on fire with your mind in this, this is game. Sounding all kind of like Bioshocky, like yeah, plasmids it's and sort stuff. Of, yeah, a little bit. I mean, it, you know, they're like with the way this, the story goes, some weird places. Um, there, you, yeah, you could kind of look at something like Bioshock as, you know, maybe maybe being something of an influence here. So Crazy. this is the mission we're on. But actually, so the thing they did in this game, because it's got co-op and you might be jumping into any online situation that might be at whatever level you want, these levels that look like they're locked, I can just hit the button and it's like, yo, man, you just want to play it or what? Hmm. Which is weird. I'm not going to do that. Uh, maybe at least, well, maybe I will later. But anyway... We've got our loadout built. I, I spent points on the the cyber core abilities that I want to use, uh, and we're just gonna go into the, the the Call of Duty now. Can you play Zork anywhere in here? Not that I've seen. No. Not okay. that I've seen. All right. uh, but there, I think there is some stuff in here okay. uh, if you get in deep enough. So. Stuff's good. Okay, so I built my one loadout that I'll probably use for the entire game. Maybe swap <laughs> out that assault rifle for a different one at some point, I guess. Uh, and uh, so you choose which cyber core you want. Uh, which means you only get access to one branch. But you see there, if I hit level 20, uh, then I can use multi-core, which seems like it'll then let me access all huh. the abilities at once. So oh. is this like, you know, in those campaign levels in adv advanced warfare, uh -huh. it'd be like, oh, here's the exo rig you've got that has yeah. this and this, but Oops. you can't use that other boosty thing. Like, is it kind of like that? Sort of, yeah. So that's like, you know, if, if you want to use things that are more like decoys that distract enemies, you can you can equip that core. So, yeah, we'll just go in. The martial core for, like, you know, closing the distance, hand-to-hand -hand stuff. Uh, control will kind of control electronics. You can take over drones in some cases and, and all that. Chaos is the one that just, like, you set dudes on fire with your mind. That's pretty good. Yeah. So we're going to go with that. Some psyops. Sure. And then we'll be out in the world doing, doing dirt. Cool. Local CIA black stations have gone dark, set up in the wake of the Singapore disaster. What happened to Singapore? Station that. Was oh, that happened. Oh, uh, got Terminator 2 Since the wall went up and the authorities abandoned evacuation efforts, the place has been pretty much run by the dominant criminal organization, the 54 Immortals. Good name for a criminal Terminator organization. From the CIA. 
The data package covered the whole sordid history. Explosion at the old coalescence facility killed 300,000. Mm -hmm. Evacuation and reclamation efforts were abandoned. Yeah, so it's weird, you know, this game not necessarily having, like, huge direct, like, like it's... Black Ops 2 went places yes. and got to a point where, like, you know, I remember going into that thinking, like, how's this future game going to tie into this Cold War thing? This is yeah. dumb. And then the, the way they did it, I actually thought was really cool. Yeah. Uh, playing as the son of Alex Mason and all that sort of stuff. This is way further removed from that, the events. Like, they're alluded to at okay. best. Um, and also, th it's Ooh. worth noting, this is a pretty straightforward campaign. It's not, you know, you think about Black Ops 2 and its branching stuff. I loved it's, that. Yeah, it was really cool. This isn't that. The only thing I didn't like about the Black Ops 2 campaign was the weird stronghold or whatever those Yeah, the AI were. was really bad. Yeah, that stuff, it was a good idea. Yeah. But yeah. It, it just didn't work. This yeah. taste. All right, so you're with Ken Shamrock here. Uh, those okay. nasty He's a soap opera actor or something. I, I looked him up at one point. Oh, okay. Huh. All right, so face looks pretty good. That would make everything taste good. Ooh. I'd get that mod. Uh, if I did that, fuck that candy bar. <laughs> <laughs> she had enough. She's like, I took three bites of this thing. And, uh, That's it for later. Not around, are we? <laughs> All right, this is as far as we go. Do you just have like generic lady voice and generic dude voice? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You pick a gender, and then the you don't you don't pick right. a voice. Uh, okay. You pick from a handful of faces and a few outfits. How many of them are Troy Baker? I don't know. I, I have not. I have actually not played the dude. You can change mid campaign if you want. You can you can go. He's got range. He could be the lady. Talented man. That's true. So the storm hits, we'll be looking at 150 mile per hour winds. Take this. This is all you know relatively real. I can look around a little bit. Looks sharp. Yeah. Moving in to scramble. Good rain effects. So I've got this micro missile launcher, but micro missiles? Tiny missiles. That sounds cool. The Immortals have already breached the Black Station. They're prepping a ship Are you Rachel Kane? No, no, you said you're unnamed, right? No, that's, yeah, that's the CIA operative that is kind of running running what we're doing here. Do you know if you we did do co-op? Uh, like, would you take control of that dude? No, or no, that dude is always there. Okay. Uh, because he's the guy who, he's the AI man who opens doors. He's the AI man that says, we need to go do this! Okay. Like, he's vital. So, uh, so you just, you are four created characters. Understood. And, uh, you can split screen, so I can play this with my girlfriend on one screen? It looks like there's a split screen option there. Yeah, yeah, there is there is split screen. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so you're in Singapore, correct? Yeah. Okay. Stay low. I had to inch forward to start the cutscene. I guess IW would be next up, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder wonder what they're working on there. Ghost 2. The, the original Ghost start? was so popular that ah. well I have to Freedom imagine it'd be flesh. not attached to ghosts. Yeah. Oh. They sell people for whatever purpose. That's a ghost is maybe the low point of the post four Call of Duty lineage. What do you say? Ah, uh, you know. World at War. The makes sure they Modern Warfare 3. There's some rough ones. Well, I mean, they're all fine. Yeah, like they're all okay. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, like, Ghosts is, it's all right. Yeah. Modern Warfare 3, I think, might actually be lower than Ghosts. Yeah, that wasn't great. Oh, good lord. That's bad. Like the running man. So I can just, I'll just pop out this micro-missile launcher and lock onto targets and blow them up. That's cool. So locks on to uh, folks and vehicles? Yeah. So I can uh, go to my cyber core stuff here and swap that out. And then I can just make that whatever that was. That just blew up. What just happened? I just blew something up you with just my mind. Do a force push thing and yeah. something blew up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I see the lower right there. That circle's filling back up. That yes. means I can use my cyber core ability pretty soon here. We'll do that. And that blew something else up, probably. What? <laughs> I'm not, dude, these guys are too far away for me to even see what they are. You know? Okay, so, yeah. so Like, I do you can, even have to aim that thing? Or no, is it well, just... it has to be the general direction. You see that cursor appears? That okay. means I just blew somebody up. Okay. Also, I can turn on my tactical layer. What did he do to the ground? Uh, so that, gra that denotes that this is a kill box and probably not a good place for me to stand. Uh, though in my experience, that hasn't been that big of a deal, really. Um, grenades get that highlight on them. 
that's only when you have the tactical thing on, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's no nothing governing you, nothing preventing you from using the tactical thing all the time, uh, which is exactly how I played the game. You had it on the entire time. Oh yeah. It uh, seems helpful. It, you see people through walls. You see icons over their heads that imply, you know, kind of if they're shooting at you or not, uh, or you know, if if they what type of oh geez, what type of enemy they are, uh, that sort of stuff. And there's no battery drain, no anything nope, like that. Nope. That's just uh, you can just do that. Well, I'm always gonna have that on. Uh, yeah, well, the only time you won't have it on is if you push up on the D-pad, it turns on like a night vision thing, and you, you choose one or the other, basically. So what benefit does night vision have Sometimes over... Sometimes it's dark. That's true. Or smoky. True. I still have my night vision goggles from Modern Warfare 2. I just, uh, I was just moving those in, off of a shelf. Yeah? And putting them somewhere out of sight. I, I was like, you know what, I don't... <laughs> like, I actually, I was using it as a hat rack for a little while. Okay, you still have the little head thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was really excited about those things, and then the field of vision was like, the postage stamp. Yeah, it was like HoloLens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if uh, anyone on your squad sees somebody, they'll be highlighted on your HUD. Okay. This is just kind of like a battlefield marking thing? Yeah. Okay. Though they, they can fade out of existence here also. So oh, okay. It's, it's, there's a ton of ammo boxes and stuff around. Uh, let's switch back to our mobile rocket launcher and blow that fucking guy up. Oh, man. Ain't doing shit! Well, let's uh, try our... Uh, wait. No, wait. Let's send out some bugs. Shoot your mind bugs at people. Is he getting attacked by bugs? Are they yeah. just doing anything, or are they just annoying They're distracting him? him you know? okay. Like, he's wearing a bunch of armor. This guy's some kind of early game jerk. Okay. I like the idea of powers that just annoy people. Yeah. Like just bugs. Well, so th these bugs, because I've upgraded them, uh, I've spent two upgrade kits on them instead of just one. They also set them on fire, which is, I mean, I'll that's, grant you, that's really annoying. Right. It goes, some would say beyond annoying. Maybe. Uh-oh. Do you? Okay. Are your grenades anything fancy or lasery, or are they just like fragmentation grenades? I get this, you know, I, I get that. It's cool looking. Immortals is that only uh, with tactical? Yeah. Weaponry and gear out there. The Superstorm's winds are going to hit harder as we move to higher ground. Get ready to plant Is the uh, story in general pretty coherent? Uh, it's always sure. hard with nano stuff and it, future It goes things. places. This is maybe the weirdest Call of Duty campaign yet. All right. Uh, I like weird. Wind's picking up. Use the bolt driver. And now I can't run because it's so windy. But I can somehow jump and... Use the driver. Driver, now. Oh, almost got blown away. <laughs> Brace yourself. So somebody would just materialize if they happen to join this uh, this yeah. game, right? Yeah. Okay. I think we would get some notice that'd be like a so and so has joined. And, yeah. You know, that sort of thing. We are a go on drone strike. We're live. What the hell? Is that a boat? Yeah. It's very windy. Boats don't go on land. Negative effect. Incoming superstorm too strong. Storm's only going to get worse. Uh, this, this tree has looked pretty good in the wind. Okay, we're going in. Hendrix, hold position. Which game had that awesome level where that huge flood came in? It was one of the last like few years. Driver handy. Remember like you're like like that? Whoa. Floods look cool. You know uh, what I'm talking was about? That was, you, that, that was uh that was, was that? Black Ops 2, wasn't it? Use your uh it might have been. I remember being pretty cool. What is this little pip above the circle in the bottom right? Is that your tactical or eyeball view? Yeah. Okay. That's like a wave pool. I like wave pools. Copy that, Hendrix. Blew that guy up. See? 
Okay. So it's like, yeah, I've got grenades, and sometimes those are useful, but... I mean, if I can just make... Grenade your feet. Also, this game does the black thing of, like, there's explosives next to a lot of dudes in this game. So it's a lot of just like, well, I guess I could just shoot these explosives and kill all these people. I am always in favor of that. It's just one of those things that just, like, logically becomes really frustrating oh. for me. I'm just like, this is dumb. But I don't play Call of Duty for logic by any no, means. That's, I just want to blow point. shit up, that's a good you know? Point. Yeah. Like, put red barrels everywhere. Then I, this is your game. All right. I mean, that might bother me if it was, like, The Last of Us or something, where it's like I want to be, like, part of the, like... Invested in this world and this story and yeah. have it make sense within this fiction, but who gives a shit about Call of Duty? You just blow everything up. All right. Uh... Bad. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I blew that guy. Yeah. I blew that guy up. Oh man. What the fuck even killed me? I seem to remember. Uh, oh, you know what? It's, yeah. So uh, the lower left has a that, that, that's my health. It's like a, a shield and then body health. You're missing thing. a torso. You know, like a Halo-ish sort of sort of thing. Right. Uh, with the the way the shield works and stuff. Um, and this is we're playing on the PS4 and all that stuff. There's audio associated with your shield recharging and all that, and it all just comes out of the controller speaker. Oh. Can, is that an option you can set? Uh, I think, you know, I think the way other games have handled it is if you disable the controller speaker, game audio comes out of it. I haven't tried it yet. Hmm. Um. All right. And blow up that guy. Oh my god, so that, that will do like a grenade caliber explosion yeah. to take out like yeah, yeah. splash damage stuff. All right. Yeah, it's like the blowing up the robots is fun and all, but they just kind of catch on fire and fall over. Using the upgraded version, which works on humans, is way more <laughs> uh, like tactically useful. Right. And it's fun, like I, I pretty much used this ability through the entire campaign. Um, but it was still enjoyable to just go, ah, fuck you guys, you're, you're now gonna, going to just blow up. And what are you hitting to uh, activate that? Uh, L1 and R1. Okay. At the same time. Oh, same time, okay. Yeah. Oh, so it's activated the same way as the like, multiplayer things? Yeah. Okay. So I haven't even seen those guys yet, really. <laughs> but because they're on the tactical view and because I could get a lock onto them, I can just blow them up from here. Seems handy. Let that recharge and, yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> and as of this, like, what we're seeing here, do you have the one that's just robots or also dudes? The robots are the fire one, the right? Yeah, uh, this is the robot one. Uh, at, at level one is just robots. Level two is is human grenades. And you do have the human one? Human yeah, grenades? that's, okay, what that's what's happening. Yeah, okay. yeah that's, that's what I just did right gotcha. there. That guy that blew up, he was human. He was. He was, I mean, yeah. It was just little red bits. Yeah. Treyarch's games were the only ones I remember being kind of gory with like missing limbs and stuff when you blow up. I remember seeing some of that in the multiplayer. Yep. Have you noticed any of that in single? Uh, yeah, I mean, the first thing that happens is your character gets ripped apart, you know? It's oh, like, there you go. Yeah. Okay. I feel like they've done that before in the series with like, was that the last one? Didn't you have like a prosthetic? Well, you had the exosuit in the last one. You yeah, get, yeah. Yeah, you get fucked up at the very beginning. Yep. Yeah. Kane, that's fun. Kane? Oh, use yeah. your DNI to extract and delete the intel. You can do that? Your DNI is connected to our central database. All transmissions are logged and tracked. So now I'm going to wave my hand in front of this computer for a while. File the screen is very dark. Storm's getting worse. It's pushing a derelict tanker right toward you. Got it. Thanks, Kane. I don't know how that looks okay, on the stream, but... <laughs> Ready? You know, Call of Duty stuff. Oh yeah. 
Eh, I always like these sequences. I'd be curious to go back and play Call of Duty 4 now, because I remember it like looking like this, like escaping that boat in right, the first yeah. one. Like, I like, did yeah. that a couple years ago. Does it? Uh, as it, it looks like shit, but it's, really? still, it's still fun. Like the multiplayer, like those are some of my favorite maps in the entire yeah, franchise, yeah. you know? It's it's a bummer that like they just keep remaking Duke Town. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and like you see maps that are inspired by levels from the previous game, but like they're, I still think that something that was just like, no, these are these maps. And maybe make some adjustments to account for like whatever like mobility changes you want to you know put in or something. But like generally right. try to be faithful to those maps. A Call of Duty classic, yes, would be pretty cool. Is your robot suit let you breathe underwater or? Uh, yeah, see, I have an oxygen meter uh, okay. down there that will drain. But yeah, generally I can I can stay underwater for a pretty long time. Are you more man or machine? Or these themes that are addressed that in the is, narrative. Yeah, that is, you are, you are digging right into what this entire game is about. Huh. But in a very Black Ops sort of way. It was actually one of the things that, you know, initially you look at it and you're like, what does it even have to do? Why is they even call this Black Ops 3? Is it just a marketing thing? Like, that sucks. Because Black Ops 1 and 2, like, that was the story stuff that had been interesting in Call of Duty. Yeah. It's a shame that they played that out. This one while not maybe directly connecting to those games in the same, uh, you know, in, in, in a way that you might have expected, thematically, uh, you know, you think about, you know, Mind Control and, and Alex Mason and you know, all the stuff that he went through and all, all that other stuff back in Black Ops 1. Like, this is, this is a modern take on some of that stuff. Okay. Uh, modern. But, <laughs> y y y you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is ripped from the headlines. This right. is happening right now. Yeah, yeah. Where they had that big vote about robot suits yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> San Francisco, vote no on robot suits. I'm like, come on. <laughs> yes to Airbnb, I'm, no to that. All right, I'm, guys. I'm voting super yes on robot suits. Yeah. I've said it before, I'd be the first one to sign up. With robot brain, robot arms, robot legs, jump jets, exosuits. Just After you play this game. You might change your tune. Never. I'm fine being more machine than man. You're really not thinking this through. <laughs> Why? <laughs> It'd be fun being I'm, a robot. I'm not going to tell you because that is the, the crux of this story. Oh, okay. Uh, the crux of this story might as well actually be, you're not thinking this through. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that'd be a fine robot. Why would I hit them with frags when I can just like duck here for a little while and then hit them with their own frags? That sounds pretty good. Uh, that's real cool. Throwback. But you know, it's it's a pretty linear campaign. You follow a guy around an environment and murder people. That sounds like Call of Duty. You know, then there's a vehicle sequence that you have limited control over a vehicle, as you might expect from the Call of Duty franchise. And it all runs at a good frame rate and feels good. Uh, you can customize some of the elements of the tactical view if you don't want that ground stuff. You can actually turn all that off. Okay. So that was kind of cool. It's actually... Uh, where would that be? Tactical mode. So, yeah, you can, you can choose kind of which... Which elements of it you want. Oh, that's cool. Uh, or, or get some different options here, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, some of it, you know, like at some point, it just you lose the sense of what the environments are, and you're just like, is this whole thing just Tron? Uh, right. Which, you know, again, <laughs> should really think this through. <laughs> it's weird. I almost feel like that kill box thing is like a real-time version of like an XCOM thing. Like, well, here's the outer perimeter right. of where yeah. the alien can well, shoot, it's the, you know? And it's, it's weird. I just haven't really gotten a good sense of what, uh, you know, and I've, and I've finished this campaign. I don't really have a good sense of like what the kill box thing is supposed to even really denote. Well, I've noticed, stood in those things and murdered everyone. Like, it hasn't necessarily been a huge problem. Well, I noticed that somebody threw a grenade at you and it only went like to the edge of the kill box stuff. Well, there's also a big red glow around the grenades, too, that let you know kind of if right. you're in grenade range or not. But like, maybe that's the exterior of like sure, their range, sure, yeah. you know. What the hell? 
Oh. They shooting. Jeez. Who's that? That's this cane lady. This cane? Military you guys cane. Okay back there? Agent Kane? I thought I told you to stay up top. Seemed like you could use some help. Besides, you two made so much noise, every 54 I foot soldier is going to be scrambling to respond. We need to get back on track. We've got to shut down their comms before they figure out what the fuck's going on. Follow me. After you. It's locked down. Yeah, the, things happen in this campaign, and, and I don't think that necessarily the story is amazing. Right. Um, they typically aren't. Uh, but it goes places that no other Call of Duty campaign has gone, and and it's like crazy the things that happen along the way. You're like, oh, this is not what I thought this game would be about at all. Like, holy shit, like, what? Okay. Like, again, you know, like, you start to think about things like Bioshock, you think about, you know, kind of the, the previous Black Ops games and what those games kind of tried to do and think of this in that same vein without necessarily being a direct sequel. It's okay. Um, What's the plan? It's, it's the black interesting. Strike and strip. And Your parts of it I definitely did enjoy. Okay. Uh, but I think that the Hendrix here it sucks every step of the way. Like, this game almost starts as like a parody of a Call of Duty game because it's just so fucking macho and just like, you gotta do this military thing. We're two military guys arguing about being macho. And it's just like candy bars. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and just some of that stuff is just corny. It, it's just lame. So, But it's what you expect from Call of Duty pretty much. Well, right? you know, like I think Treyarch has done better. They've proven that they can do yeah, better. And yeah. I think elements of this campaign definitely do do better. So, like, yeah, you know, you could be satisfied with low expectations, but like this is still one of the biggest franchises in the world, and they have so many resources and you know and all this talent that they could put on the writing teams and all this other stuff that like you know they could do better uh, across the board, I think. Um, but I think some of the some of the, my problems with this game are oh jeez, oh, dying to dumb robots. Uh, no, some of my problems with this game are, are design choices that they made. Okay. You know, that the, the they would, I'm, I'm sure, defend. In campaign? Uh, no, in multiplayer, mostly. Okay. It sounds like overall, I'm getting kind of a positive vibe about this campaign. It seems like you're, you enjoyed it overall? It's, it's okay. You know, it, I, think it's, I think the action is the boring part. Okay. Uh, which is unfortunate, because, you know, it's... it's You know, it gives you cool tools like that. Yeah. You know, I'm blowing up stuff with my mind. That should be amazing. But instead, over the course of it, you're like, ah, you know. Huh. I, I was pretty big on Advanced Warfare's campaign. Did you like that one? I enjoyed it. Yeah? Yeah. I know you're big on the multiplayer, but like, yeah, I really I, I like that whole game. I like that whole game. So you see, the, when the robots blow up, they don't necessarily make a huge explosion the same way a grenade would. Right, so it's, right. a, it's a little less. So the idea of just setting robots on fire is a real cool thing. Yeah, totally. Get to work on that relay. Make sure these sons of bitches can't talk to each other. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Kane, these sons of bitches. Are, are, ah. Where are you? Do not like that character you one bit. Black <laughs> it's He's tough. If yeah. the Call of Duty universe needed a Rico, <laughs> Killzone's own <laughs> Rico. <laughs> We're done. It's Jacob Hendricks. <laughs> God, I forgot about Rico. <laughs> Structure's unstable. Rico or Dom? Could break apart at any point. Dom. I'll Dom? take Dom any day of the week. All right. Dom's got some pathos. <laughs> Evolution. Oh, man. Well, let's uncharted our way through this fallen building. You don't want bad weather to be part of your epitaph. 
don't think they put that on the epitaph. <laughs> Died of bad weather. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that. It's not. No. You don't put cause of death on tombstones. I'm on a secret CIA black op. They wouldn't put anything <laughs> on my tombstone. Yeah. <laughs> It'd just be a white cross amongst like eight billion other ones. Yeah. I think I got here way faster than. Yep. Come on! <laughs> They're still on site, trying to grab everything they can before the worst of the storm hits. What do you suggest? There's a lot of cases where a lot of these cutscene, these kind of in game things feel canned, and so you end up with guys that are talking to you without looking at you, or their heads are turning, but they're very much stuck in a position and stuff oh. like that. A lot of the stuff you see with, you know, kind of real time cinematic stuff. Hey, look at that boat. Boats aren't supposed to be up there. Well, it's a, been a rough time in Singapore ever since the incident. You got hostiles inbound. Dead ahead. It makes you turn your tactical overlay on after some sequences, like it, it shuts off oh, for okay. cutscenes for whatever reason. Hmm. It's a social faux pas to have that turned on while yeah. you're talking to someone. It's like, you know, no one likes Google Glass. <laughs> hey, as a new glass explorer, I take offense to that, Jeff. <laughs> Okay. There's never been a better time to get into Google Class. Oh, no. <laughs> no I think, I think it's a piece of shit. <laughs> so it looks like there's... Uh, at first I thought it was just like one big kill box, and it looks like there's like little pockets. Yeah, there can and be. They'll, they'll be somewat dynamic. You know, you'll kind of see them pop up and go away as things change. You know, that's so when you kill all the enemies in the area, they'll go away. Okay. Goodbye. And they never, you know, maybe it's one of those things that, you know, I, they have some pretty, they have a, a super high difficulty setting in this game where you die in one hit. Just maybe a little extreme. Is that like above veteran? Yeah. What's it called? Uh, is it realistic? Is it maybe? unlocked from the beginning? Yeah, I think so. That's not realistic. There's plenty of places you can get shot and not die. Yeah, well. Oh, jeez. This is a big enemy with a chain gun. He's, he's an annoying guy, but I forgot that I have this micro missile launcher. What happens if you do your little force grenade fire thing to I a I don't think big... it works on him. Yeah, no valid no. target. Okay, so no effect whatsoever. Yeah, it, it doesn't waste your cooldown on it or anything oh, like good. that. It's just... Boy, that missile launcher thing looks pretty nice. I think this is the only mission you have it. Aww. So this is like a push left on the D-pad to pull this missile up. Like, uh, this, uh, right. this up. This is kind of a special weapon. Can you shoot it before you get a lock? I think so. I wonder if the fire, if the... Let's call those out, see if it distracts. I think those at least distract him. Is he a robot man or is he a man in a suit? That's the ultimate question! No! I actually don't know. Why would a robot give a shit about bugs? That's probably a dude, then. <laughs> Robots don't care about bugs. Uh, this is Sparks. Okay. Let's find out what we're dealing with here. Really want to just loot that toolbox right now for <laughs> reasons we'll talk more about next week. Yep. <laughs> Something left in our hurry. Kane. Could be 54i grunt detonations. Yeah, maybe if the doors were blown in, but they're blown out. What could it mean? Your gun's blue. I put camo on it. Oh, cool. This is the true vet camo. I don't know how I unlocked it. If it's like, hey, you played a bunch of other Call of Duty games or what the deal is, but huh. I had it from the start. So, do, I, you, do you always play on PlayStation? Uh, no, no. I, I mean, I PS4. Uh, yeah. I switched over, uh, but you know, yeah, same played here. all the 360 games on 360 because they that was a better controller and ran better there. Yep. 
likewise. Did the last year's campaign on PC and that looked really good. Mm, yeah. Something up ahead. They're saying they're gonna have some kind of modding support for the PC version of this. Oh, for weird. User maps and stuff, which huh. could be really cool. I'd be curious to check that out. I usually do multiplayer on console, and I think. Well, I'll it's hard because uh, multiplayer on. Oh, hey, these are. <laughs> it's like, what are oh, these hey, guys doing here? <laughs> Dummy. So are you are you working for the U.S. military here? Yeah, I mean she's with the CIA. We're oh, black right. ops. Like, okay. You know, it's it's the the same basic relationship, but they refer to it less as the United States and more as the. There's someone in there. Will Cop Accord, the Winston Accord. Huh. No and uh, we could go into the game's fake Wikipedia if you want to know what that <laughs> is, but it's like a it's a coalition of nations. Okay. Does it have a uh, fake social network on the fake internet? Uh, no, but you see a message board post, but it's mostly like a fake Wikipedia. Okay. That was the Omnipedia thing? Yeah. Holy fuck. Holy fuck, bro. <laughs> yeah. Shit, dog. These dudes are dead, yo. <laughs> oh, good lord. Why are their noses gone? Fuck. Is this Kane? Running a search now. Denial of reincarnation. Perpetrated by Jay Zhang. 54 immortals in Seems fortune. like you're up against some bad dudes, Jeff. Mm. They cut the faces off this whole room full of CIA dudes. Yeah, uh, it's a bad thing to do. Oh no. That's not good. What? Something else? The data drives. They're gone. Surveillance footage, reports, debriefs, everything we came here to download and clear. Local hard copy of a CIA black site provides a daily sync with ongoing CIA global activity. If that gets out... It'll compromise every CIA operation around the world. I guess that's bad. That's what probably bad. Yes. Biodomes. The heart of 54 Immortals operations and home of Brother Biodome? Team yeah, Biodome. Man, this place, this campaign does go places. Yep. So let's go get our drives and give them a little payback. I don't think the Immortals killed these people. You saw the doors blasted from the inside. You saw them drilling. They never made it inside this room. So who do you think did it? I mean, who else had access to this? The last recorded operation at this Winslow station Accord. Mm. Involved a Winslow Accord black... Carl Winslow Accord. Yeah. It was John Taylor's team. You think they had something to do with John Taylor and his team, uh, you see it in the very first mission. And uh, Christopher Maloney plays John Taylor. I like that guy. Yes. He's cool. Yes. I kept waiting for a moment in this game where a can of beans just turns in because we had no business being in Singapore. Just like, just have that whole sequence. What is that from? From Wet Hot American Summer. Oh, I haven't seen that. I think I don't think I've ever actually seen a Christopher Maloney movie or TV show. He was just always down to do super weird stuff on Conan like 15 years ago yep. all yeah. the time, yeah. which I always loved. He's got, it's, it just seems like he, he just seems like a guy with a solid sense of humor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think SVU uh, had its ups and downs, but. I definitely thought he was pretty good on it when he was on it. Is he in Road Trip or was that Harold and Kumar or he was he played he had a bunch of like facial prosthetics yeah, yeah. on. That's um that's oh. Harold and Kumar, I think. Is that Harold and Kumar? Yeah, that sounds about right. Because I've not seen Road Trip and I know what you're talking about, <laughs> so I assume it's Harold and Kumar. Okay. The first one I didn't see any of the later Harold and Kumar movies. I think there are only two. I think I saw I the think second they did. one. I want to say they did a third. Did they? I don't know. Was the, was the second one they were like Guantanamo Bay or something? And then there was a Christmas one, wasn't there? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> you gotta see Road Trip, Jeff. Gotta see it. I saw Euro Trip, but... <laughs> oh, I forgot they made one. You don't need to see Road Trip. Uh, Tom Green's in Road Trip, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't think we all have anything else here uh, other than, you know, more stuff about the collectibles or whatever, but, you know, you can literally just, like, go read about what the Winslow Accord is and, you know, what countries are in it and go read about what's NATO? What's mm. the Cold War? <laughs> so just normal facts about what's the Cold the War? War? Yeah, most of this stuff is relatively normal facts. 
But eventually, like I said, you know, the, the deeper in you play, uh, you eventually start getting access to some things in here. Uh, which is that nice, you know, as, as someone who was looking for just a little bit more of Black Ops 1 timeline stuff. It was nice to, to find a little bit of it here. I, I would have rather seen a little bit more. Yeah. So, uh, I wanted to ask you. Kane thinks Taylor's behind the black station. I'm gonna make my bedroom look like this room. This room's yeah. cool. Uh, so we got two fabrication kits from leveling up. Um, what is Ravage Core? Kane said they're off the grid. Ra it where was that? It looks like you're holding a beating, going to control, right there. It looks cool. Tear through robot's armor plating yep. and rip out its power cell. So it's like a Metal Gear Rising thing. Uh, the rope power cell can then be thrown like a grenade. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. Okay, that seems cool. So, so it's so, ripping so, out robot hearts. Yeah, temporary disable robots. And you see down at the bottom is the upgraded version. So it goes from three to, three targets to five. Okay. <clears throat> uh, four semis to seize up. Um, uh, this one will kill them if you upgrade it. Okay. Causes augmentation joints to bend in hazardous, often fatal ways. Fun. Uh, sir, short out some robots. Uh, so those, those that seems like it would be... Useful as, as some of these seems like they'd be pretty useful as well. Uh, takedowns like a, a charged up melee thing. Okay. Um, concussive wave. Uh, concussive blast is like the gravity spike thing from multiplayer that that one meathead did. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're gonna push the ground like that. That guy. <laughs> um, weapon lockout. So if you want people to stop shooting at you, you can do that sort of stuff. So you know they give you some different options depending on how you want to play it. But I find that making humans blow up. And making robots catch on fire was so sure. was pretty much the the most useful. It's probably the path I'll take. Um, well, I think so in this mode, you can also uh, get into combat immersion. This is a wave-based survival mode. Like I said, there's a lot in this game, uh, and this this is this is not even in the regular menus. This is just like oh, here's this totally separate score-based, like relatively fleshed-out mode. Jeez. That is set on this one map uh, that is only seen here, as far as I can tell. And Clear so all you, these, you can play as Gray Fox. Right, yeah. Oh, this is not the gun I thought I would have. Oh, well. I'm a sucker for, like, environments that look like this. Like, there's that one yep, map that in one Halo. Halo 5 that, yep. Yeah, yeah, that kind of, like, paintball arena, but cyberspace. Yeah. Cyber paint. It's a good look. Uh, yeah, I like it, too. So yeah, you know, you, you go in here, you, you get scored based on how well you do. <laughs> out of the speaker, you start hearing a bunch of glitchy noises as you when you when you run out of shields and start taking health damage. Hmm. Um, and then in multiplayer, a lot of like the UAV callouts and stuff like that uh, come out of the controller speaker too. All right, this campaign. Cool. I'll play through that. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm really curious to how that because there, there's a lot of like HUD stuff going on, mm -hmm. and so I think I want to play it split screen. So I'm curious how that's all going to work out. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah. I like this. I like that little noise. Yeah. I like this little interface here. Their little logo filling up thing. Like that's. I, like that. I like that. Were you a fan of the GameCube startup animation and sounds? Well, yeah. Kind of. Okay. 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 <laughs> It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so multiplayer ass multiplayer. If you, you remember the beta, right? I do. It's that. Okay. More or less. It was uh, fun. I'm playing as this dude with his glitch ability, which is what I was playing as when we were playing the beta. So, um, so you know, uh, public, it's got public match has arena. This is where they put their kind of like esports stuff <laughs> into. You see, it has bans and protects like it was a oh, MOBA. Wow. Uh, and. I don't, I don't know that stuff, man. It's <laughs> not really. Uh, but everything is unlocked here in this mode. Uh, you don't have to level up to unlock it, so we can look at some of the abilities. Uh, is that a fireman? So, yeah, one of his ability here is a flamethrower. Okay. Or uh, an, a massive heat blast, which seems like it could be useful. Treyarch likes their, uh, their flamethrowers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you can, uh, you know, read a little bit about... The individuals, if you care about the story of the multiplayer, which is nah. sort of a weird thing. <laughs> no, uh, good. This guy's got stealth camo. 
and a, uh, a lethal blade. Okay, so he's almost like that Borderlands uh, Zero. Yeah, you disappear yeah, and go stab dudes. Uh, this is the robot. It gets a minigun. Or spawn three decoy clones that run forward to distract enemies. Uh, trap pods. Recover from your position at your death with an injection. Oh, so this is uh, like a um, the the flare. It's like the tactical insertion. Yeah, yeah. I, I would uh, I would absolutely that's probably what I will switch to if I unlock it in the regular multiplayer. I specifically like those type of things in like domination or capture you know capture the flag type mm -hmm. things like deathmatch not so much. Yeah. So you know each each of these characters looks like each one of these characters. So you know as a as a result everyone kind of looks the same. I've unlocked uh, different camo options for this guy here. He's got his arctic camo. Yeah. Um when he's as you see there in a very non arctic environment. Yeah. Yeah. Um and that's it's weird, because you have a lot of characters that just kind of look the same running around, and I think that's a really strange choice. Like, you know, it's one of those things that, like, for their arena mode, where they're cl clearly trying to draw inspiration from the way MOBAs work, I get it. But, like, for the vast majority of people that play this game, I just don't feel like that's a great choice. I think it's kind of right. lame. I think it's kind of lame. Huh. Um, so you see here, you know, like, these, some of these specialists are locked until we level up. Same type deal. You prestige. There's weapon prestige. You create a class. You pick ten things. You go. Okay. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of wild cards in place, so you can double up on perks or have a bunch of different weapon attachments and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm a versatile player, so I've built one class with an assault rifle and another one with an LMG. Oh, that's exactly the setup I have. Yeah. I default to assault, and I have my LMG one. Yeah. It's yeah. You know, the shotguns and stuff like that, it's got them. It's, it's cool, but, you know. I never do shotties or snipers. It's or... just not my thing for, yeah. for this game. So, you know, it's got gun, oh, it's gun, I love gun, it's gun game. game. It's got gun game. Gun game. That's a good logo for gun game. Yeah, let's try, you know what, let's try yeah. playing gun game. Uh, because it says that 6% of players are in gun game right now. If we're lucky, maybe we can get in. Is it still, uh, like, 20? I remember it was 20 guns. And I, I don't know. I, it's, it's, I have only played a slight little bit of gun game um, so far. I'm surprised it's not more popular. Like, I never really hear anyone talking about it, but I, I think it, it's such it, a fun I think mode. It was, it was quite popular, and, yeah. and it's nice that it's in a, like, a not a, a non-private playlist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Though this is listed as special and time-limited engagements, so this is where they would put other stuff. They got their hardcore modes if you want that stuff. And then core, these are all modes you've seen before except for Safeguard, uh, where you escort a robot, uh, and the other team has to, you know, try to stop the robot. This is like a capture the flag, but the flag, the flag has moves. AI? Yeah, pretty okay. much. So this, fu funny story, this mode was something that they were testing out, and I actually played for Black Ops 2. That's right. Yeah, that was an E3 thing they were showing people there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that it didn't make it into the game. Yeah. Uh, I remember the, the thing was that they couldn't get the AI stuff down right. Uh, right, they were right. Some kind of issues with it. So it's, it's in here, and it's kind of the new mode. Uh, you know, if we look at these percentages, you see... Team Deathmatch, Domination, those are the things people want to do yep. in a Call of Duty game, as Man, it turns out. Kill Confirm so much better in TDM. It's fine. I like uh, it so much. I don't, I don't, it's, I, I'm fine with Team Deathmatch as well. I like it because even if you're not racking up kills, you can just scrounge around and grab a bunch oh, of yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, seems like there's a nice uh, variety here. The bottom team seems to really like being Sparrow. I was gonna say they got some sparrows up top as oh, well. Oh boy, okay, maybe and, sparrows. And a, like that's the name oh. of the ability. So Vision Pulse is the same character, just with a different oh, ability. Oh, okay, she's very popular. Yeah, uh, and Sparrow is the bow uh, that is, you know, a one-shot kill that that drags people back to the wall, and makes them blow up. It's fun to watch. That sounds cool. All right, so. On mission. Nice. We did not get dropped into a map that was in the beta. I feel like I've. <laughs> You know, playing the game over the past day or so, uh, it's been a lot of seeing stuff that was in the beta. Getting that one, like, zoom map or whatever a bunch of times. Ah! So, you know, this is, uh, we played the beta. You know, if, yeah. you remember that. Yep. This is, this is that with more maps. Uh, I can slide and... I like sliding. You know. You know it feels real cool? In games where there's, like, a domination mode and you slide into the flag. Yep. That's I do that every time. Yeah, feels great. Is there a dolphin dive? No, because the, oh, that's just the, the slide. slide. That's yeah, the slide. It's circle, yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll take the slide. Yes, I would rather have the slide than the dive. Though people do still belly flop. It's still a fucking Call of Duty game. <laughs> yeah. All right, this guy here. Let's see where it goes. Nope. You ever slide into a melee? Friendly lightning strike inbound. I wonder, huh? One of these games had you that can melee while you're sliding. Okay. 
I think one of these had an achievement for killing someone that way. So, melee. You see, it's a gun butt. Yeah. Melee doesn't automatically kill. What? Melee is not a guaranteed one-hit kill anymore. That's not how Call of Duty does things. I know. Uh, it's, uh, so there's, I guess, you know, you can equip a a combat knife or something like that, and that'll make it a one-hit kill. Like a but, uh, or something? Uh, no, I, well, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if I've seen any of the weapons that have that, but, um, yeah. So it's like, it'll ring someone's bell, like if you get hit with a melee and you're not dead, it'll kind of shake, you know, the, the screen will kind of... It's kind of like a flash out. grenade or concussion grenade effect or something? A little bit, yeah. God damn it. Uh, you see, I have the perk that shows that player's footsteps as they're running away. That seems helpful. That seems real helpful. Let's try this again. We'll stay on us. Okay, well. Nope. Nope. The whole building is camo. I can't even see it. It just looks like a mountain. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right. I I really, you know, and it's one of those, like I was saying before. I'm sure that they have a good, solid explanation for balancing and you know their choices uh, for melee uh, and then the things they've done. You know, th you think about like there, there's this game has definitely changed melee ranges a lot from year to year. Right. So, like, clearly there's been some attempts to try to, you know, do things with uh, with the melee attack. I I don't like not having it as an automatic one-hit kill. I think that's... I, I don't like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm very used to that going back to, you know, the early, early Call of Duties. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I have these special abilities. Uh, L, and same deal, hit L1 and R1 at the same time, which, like, my special ability is like a kind of get out of jail, you know, get out of a bad situation. But because of it being those buttons and my fingers always being on the twos and not the ones, right? Like, for, it's, I find myself just, like, often stuck in this situation of, like, well, I could get away from this, but I should really just try to be shooting, right? And, and you know, that moment of decision it means everything, you know? You ever seen those people that do the, the four fingers on the... Like, I can't do that. Yeah, that I, don't, I, just, I, don't, I don't like doing that. Yeah. So, uh, they don't have anything like the uh, like assault package or support package specialist? Like, nope. No, okay. no, these are very much the, you know, Call of Duty skills, uh, score streaks that you... Another win for the Accord. The expect it's got the remote control car in there. Okay, I always like that thing. I thought it was funny in theory, but never ever wanted to use it. Really, I constantly yeah, use nah, it. I just I don't like using it. One shot, one kill. Won't even hear it coming. Can this be preloaded on PC? Do you know? I don't know. Uh, the game's got unlockable taunts and stuff like that, so that thing that she just said, you can unlock more of those. There's like a, if you're the, the leading player on a team, you get a little D-pad pop-up, you can threaten or do what, you know, there's different stuff you can do. Hmm. Um, Voltron 6969. Yeah. Yeah. Our good friend. <laughs> friend of the site. The five lions <laughs> uh, formed together in an entirely different way. I don't even know Voltron, but that's funny. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the robots got together and they became a big robot, uh -huh. right? Okay. Were they all robot lions? Yeah, it was five five lions that formed into a robot. Okay, it's kind of like there Power was a different Rangers, thing that was also Voltron that then was like nine thousand different boxes and little cars and stuff. And is that, that lamer? Was, that was super lame. Okay, I just know Power Rangers. Yeah. Uh, um. So I think I unlocked an additional reticle. Do you have the Carl's Jr. French fry reticle? You know, I don't. I kind of want to find a Carl's Jr. so I can get the French fry reticle. I drive Pi 1 on the freeway on a pretty regular basis. Really? Yeah. Well, if you happen to get any, I'll take that French yeah. fry reticle. 
Okay. <laughs> if I end up with an extra French fry reticle, <laughs> I will all, let you know. That's all I ever wanted someone to say to me. <laughs> ah, this is that map that was in the beta. We're going to jump out of that one. Um, let's see if we can get into a safeguard game. Like, you know, like I said, the, the game is not out worldwide yet. So, uh, you know, getting into some of these somewhat more esoteric modes may be problematic. I wonder if that's disheartening for developers to, like, put in time and effort to these other new modes that sometimes are really cool, and then it's like, ah, everyone's just going to do these two. Like, people might play it for the first couple weeks or whatever. Right, but... yeah. I don't know. I liked Headquarters, and Headquarters yeah. isn't in there anymore. I mean, Hardpoint is, which is, you know, very similar, but I kind of liked the traditional Headquarters rules. Yep, me too. I've always thought Treyarch did a good job with uh, multiplayer. Even going back to, I know Call of Duty 3 is a low point for the series. Sure. And campaign-wise, it certainly was. But I thought Call of Duty 3's multi was fun. All right, well, it looks like, you know, we're going to have trouble getting into some different modes uh, today since the game's not out. So this is the Crypto... The Cryptarch? No. No, wrong. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> this is the black market where you spend crypto keys, and as you play, you earn crypto keys, and then you can get a supply drop. And so those... Translate into unlocks here, or in a couple of different spots. So uh, you can you can put a custom paint job on your gun if you want. You can paint it up yourself. Uh, you can unlock different camos, and then some of these are from the black market. Okay. There's a lot going on in this game. Yeah, it's just like every single menu's got like nine more layers to it, and you're like, yeah. guys, I just it's that's cool, but like. But the melee takes one hit too many. <laughs> um, and some of those actually go on to him as well. So you see, we can kind of, uh, you know, he'll have some some custom heads here. Um, you can get some, get a brief look at some of those. We're looking a little different. So, you know, some of those are just like get kills as this character and all that right. sort of stuff. Um, and then taunts. With these upgrades, you never stood a chance. I like this dude, and I don't know if all the characters do it or not, but uh, when he you reload, you hear robot noises as that's, he's reloading his gun. That's cool. And I don't have any of these, because these are all from the, the black market. Hmm. It doesn't look like there's any way to just straight up buy crypto keys with real money. That's good for now. But I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> you know, they, they definitely started selling advanced supply drops in Advanced Warfare. Uh, post release, so right. yeah, that seems like that's a, a a switch they could flip someday. When they first introduced Call of Duty Elite, that was supposed to be you pay, and then it was early access to maps, right? Yeah, it was like a it was like, it was a, like a, a pumped up season pass that got you access to their stat tracking stuff. And Which I like the stat tracking stuff, but I just never want to pay for it, you know. But they made all the stat stuff free at a certain point. Yeah, they yeah you know, they realized that was not going to work. Yeah. Uh, so there are a handful of free run maps. That are off the multiplayer, man. Like much like how there's that that multiplayer co-op thing off of the campaign safe house. Yeah. Off of the multiplayer menu, you've got this uh, free run thing. What the hell is this Mirror's Edge shit here? Uh, yeah, I mean they've got a few courses here that what? you can go through, and then there's leaderboards for time trials and. Weird. Yeah. I did not expect this. And this one is this actually. Uh, this is a good way to learn some of the controls, honestly. Like, yeah. your first time through this free run is, is pretty good at just kind of learning, like, what you can do. Oops, screwed that up. I could have, uh, landed into a slide there. Floating above this booger planet. Is this fun? This is just such a weird thing to see from Call of Duty. Oh, so it's... What do they call it? The Olympic thing? Is it skeet shooting? Where you're like running and like you ski that's down a hill and then you shoot a duck and then you swim or the, something? That's the biathlon. Oh, okay. And it's ski shooting, not ski shooting. Is it really? Because oh, you, you ski for like... a while and then you shoot. Oh, okay. Skeet shooting is shooting skeet, which are clay pigeons. So that's the duck hunt third mode. Yeah. Okay. That's a good mode. Yeah. Made good sounds. Also, in some of those multiplayer maps, uh, you know, you, you saw how high I got there just off of like a wall run. Yeah. Uh, you can really get up in some of these maps. I don't mean I don't mean throwing your tag on the wall. Uh, I mean like you can get up pretty high, 
And it, like some of the areas you can get to, you, there are like rooftops that you can clearly get up to, and you would normally be able to land on them, but they just put invisible walls in place to prevent it. Oh, damn. Um, and similarly, there are spots where it looks like you should be able to wall run where you can't. And hmm. it just feels kind of inconsistent in spots. Does it make you wary of, of doing bit. things like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It seems like one of the things, like, if you spend a lot of time on the maps, like, it's not a big deal. It's just one of those weird things. But, like, there's one spot on one of the maps where you can jump out of the map, and it'll give you a countdown timer, like, hey, get back on the battlefield! Huh. But, like, then there are these other spots that are just like, nope, you can't get here at all! Like, well, why didn't you put an invisible wall there? Weird. And, yeah, I don't know. It's it's strange. Can you do the uh, Titanfall thing where you, like, put your knife in the wall and get the drop on someone? No. I like that thing a lot. The shooting while you're wall running is pretty cool looking. Oh, oh no! no! The very end, too. Ooh. I just wasn't holding down. I was not holding down the button. Not what a exactly. weird thing. Yeah, so that's that's the beginner one. You know, yeah, they have yeah. more courses that get more advanced from there. Um and again, like what a weird thing. Are they gonna release more maps for that too? Who knows? I it's like what what is going Nah. It, one With thing an extra year, they were just like, I don't know, fuck it. <laughs> you can never fault Call of Duty games for not giving you your $60 worth. There's a lot of game in every one of these games. There, there is a, a ton of game in here. It's just a matter of, like, do you find a lot of it worth playing or right. not? And that brings us to zombies. Gobble gum? Gobble gum. Uh, yeah, you, you build a gobble gum loadout, and that determines, I think, what gumballs can fall out of uh, gumball machines that you find in the world. Uh, you can use the, you can use this liquid divinium to get more un, to unlock. Well, some of these some of this gum is like a one time use thing. Where is that? That's on the customized gobble gum pack. No, okay, yeah, no here. And so they're the classics that unlock as you level up, and then mega, which are these kind of one time use ones. I don't. You see what they do here? It'd be like all zombies freeze in place for twenty seconds. Okay, that sort of stuff. Right. You know, um, man, I have always struggled to get into these modes. I, I just, just and, and to get to your back to your point about kind of the value proposition of right of zombies or, or, or of a Call of Duty game. I have never liked the zombie modes. No, I haven't either. Never ever. Not from the beginning. Uh, there's an unlockable second mode which I don't have unlocked that is kind of cool that does involve zombies. Um, I know I yelled at you and this one's got like a, a crazy noir theme to it, All right. uh, which is you know, it's interesting that it's you know, like this this very different vibe uh, from what they've done previously with zombies and. I I think it's cool that they have this thing that they can just decide to get wacky with. You know, each entry it's like oh yeah. what's the weird take on this? Like what actors are we gonna get for this? Like right. what yeah. setting that is just completely separated from the lore of the main game and yeah. everything. Right. But like I just don't think the gameplay is I fun. Can hear you. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you. So, you know, it's, it's it's zombies, man. Like, you start in this tiny area, and eventually you get enough, enough money to open up that door, and these zombies are going to try to tear down the walls. Is it still like the weird shit where it's like, oh, well, you have to, like, take off a mannequin's head and put it on a ceiling fan and pee so, on it, and that no, opens a well, gate? No, in this one, you hold this to become the beast, and then while you're the what beast, the I, can, I can go break this. The fuck? Um, this is the darkness. And, and, uh, and that's an item that I need, and then here's a little thing I can break open too, and then there's a skull in here that I guess probably kills everything. Uh, and so, yes, ev everything you're saying, everything you think about how zombies modes has worked and been like this fucking arcane, insane thing is absolutely in this. Are you a detective that gets like crazy demon abilities? Well, I'm not always a detective. There are four characters, and they all have their own unique kind of thing going on. All right. Uh, but it, who, when a player runs up to this thing here when it's active, then you you know you become the beast, and then I can get over here and kick, pick up this item. The summoning key, and then you see it as one of five items, and yeah, yeah, you know, it's zombies. <laughs> I hate this shit. Only can you prevent the destruction of your world. It's on top of thinking zombies are just like an overdone and lame thing, and have been since like the first Dead Rising. Yeah. I. Uh, it's, you add on the fact that I don't think the gameplay is very good, and this is just not a mode. Like, and again, I know people love it. I mean, that's, that's oh yeah, great, people but. truly love it. I, I I think that you know those people should be, those people deserve a full game. I think and a separate thing. A separate thing. And you know the people that, that like Call of Duty, I think deserve 
you know, like if, if this time was spent on something else. Right. Finding a use for this. You know, and this is meant to be played with four players also. Yeah, you know? yeah. But uh, sure. I'm not going to jump into someone's game and ruin it for them right. by, by playing it for like five minutes before leaving. Right. So. So I picked up a fumigator earlier, which means I can. Oh well, I guess that's not. That's not a thing. I well, maybe I need to find another fumigator. I don't know. These things can be opened up and they'll have items in them, or sometimes it'll just be fucking evil bugs. <laughs> All right. Let's get a gumball. Coagulant. What is this guy talking about? I don't know. <laughs> Longer bleed out time. Well, I'm alone, so that's not useful. Can you at least tell us what the hell is going on? He's just as confused as we are. I'm saying this, but this seems woefully inadequate. Nowhere safe. I actually think I had more fun with the uh, that aliens mode that was in that one game more than zombie mode. It's in ghosts, right? I think so, yeah. I must harness this power. Getting out of hand. You know, another spot for me to become the beast. Running downside to that, or should you just use? Well, it's, it's limited chance? time, and it's like the thing where I feel like if you want to try to do whatever hidden secret thing is in here, then you need to figure out where the walls you need to break down are, and all that sort of stuff. Hmm. So the answer is I don't really know. <laughs> This, this is truly amazing. A full body transmogrification. Is that Goldblum? Probably. It super sounds like Goldblum. Uh, Ron Perlman is one of the four characters. Okay. Uh, they're all named actors. I, I, I don't remember who it is, though. Hmm. Other than Ron Perlman. I thought it was kind of a funny idea, and I think it was Black Ops 2 where he plays like Kennedy and Nixon and stuff. Or yeah. Whatever. Like that, that was funny to me. Yeah, I don't know. I, I always read like the, you know, the, the read I get on zombies when they go like, oh, we got these named voice actors is like, please care about zombies, all you people who don't already care about it. It just seems right. like, a, like a way to try to hook people in. Yeah. But I, I don't know, man. This never seems like. Let's open another door. That'll go well. It always does. You have blood on your hands. It cannot be cleansed. Activate chain trap. No. It's a gross thing. Well, let's see what it does. Oh, what? Cool. Zombie mode. Right there. <laughs> God damn it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I guess I should crouch there, huh? I now guess. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. This is. I don't intend to ever play the zombies mode in this game ever again. Um, but you know, I played uh, played a chunk of it for review purposes, and right. That re review will run later today. Cool. Um. I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, it looks it looks like a Call of Duty game. It certainly does. Um. Yeah. For sure, you know, you gain XP across the board. That means if you're if you go to play local and do the campaign, you'll be earning progress that won't carry over to your online campaign because you're you know you're gaining experience levels and and all that sort of stuff. Right. Uh, that you know uh, determines how what you can unlock and when and and all that sort of stuff. Um. Yeah, and here we are back to our brooding man with pistols. Uh, thanks for joining me, Dan. That's that's Call of Duty Black Ops Three. 
It's yeah. uh, it's got some cool maps, but you know some of the invisible wall stuff I, I found a little disappointing. And and like I said, yeah, re- review will run tonight. Uh, so give that a look if you are curious for kind of the full picture of this thing. Cool. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody. Thank you, Jeff.